And we'll talk about this too, is like, where do people go to complain about stuff? Where do people go to, to solve problems? I mean, that's, that's what this is all about, you know, so. All right, everybody. Hi, welcome to the Job Sync Recruitment Marketing Roundtable, April 2022. We're very excited to have all of you. Uh, today, our featured guest is Greg Hawks. You may know him from uh, his TikToks or his YouTube channel or some of his um, websites that he has. Greg's all over all the social platforms. So if you're not familiar with him now, you will be by the end of this roundtable. Uh, joining me today, as always, is our Chief Commercial Officer, Leah Daniels, and morning, CEO everyone. and founder, huh? I said morning, everyone. <laughs> and CEO and founder, Alex Murphy, who are going to help me along this journey with Greg. Uh, before we jump into things, I'm going to have Leah say a couple things, and then we're just going to jump right in um, and we're going to talk about sourcing secrets to help recruiters and go over some trends and myths and just try to have a good hour so um, per usual if you have anything you'd like to say or chime in please do so that's why we have you on have your cameras your mics ready to go and please utilize the chat function um, we're going to be monitoring that as well so if you have a question comment point of concern just you know jump jump right in don't don't feel like you have to wait uh, raise your hand huh? or scream we're, we're we're gonna we welcome everything with open arms um and we do not do a whole lot of censorship here so you may hear some four letter words along the way i hope you're ready yeah <laughs> not for me <laughs> not, not for i'm gonna, me. I'm gonna apologize in advance <laughs> my mom's not proud <laughs> uh good morning everyone thanks for joining us i'm a little sick so bear with me uh we are here today with Greg, as uh, Lex has mentioned, uh, just before we get started a little bit about JobSync. We are a talent acquisition automation platform. We've been working with enterprise organizations and companies who are really trying to increase their candidate workflow and candidate throughput. Um, most of our clients, once they start working with JobSync, find that they get two to five X the number of candidates through their Indeed, the recruiter and other integrations. Same budget, more candidates. Who doesn't love that? Um, but maintaining the quality that you're expecting from uh, your screening questions and things like that. So if you're in, that's something that's interesting for you guys or you're finding that you're struggling with candidates, you should definitely reach out to us. Let us know that we can help you. Um, to get started, uh, I wanna just start with Greg. You know, Greg, we are in an interesting time as we've been for the last couple of years. The, the market has continued to shift. I think I saw the other day, we're down to 3.6% unemployment. We added 430,000 people to the payroll last month, but there are still 11.3 million open jobs. At least they were in February. I think that number's actually gone up since then. So, you know, a lot of people say I can't find people. I can't find them. Where are the people? But in talking to you, you said something that I thought was super interesting, which is it's not hard to find them. It's hard to get them to talk to you. Yeah. Right? Finding yeah. isn't the problem. It's the engagement piece. So just to start off, you know, Give us your perspective. Well, and, and if you see with the background behind me, people say I can't find them anywhere. Well, people often forget there's so many different websites. There's so many different applications out there. There's so many different places that people communicate, people talk, people complain about work. They, they for instance, like engineers will go to um, GitHub and, and look up code and, and find solutions that way. So. I always use this background because whenever somebody says, I can't find somebody, I mean, are you really looking at, at all the blog sites? Are you really looking um, through Google the right way? I mean, uh, I was looking yesterday, helping out one of my coworkers and we found an entire directory uh, full of, of CISA-based uh, of CISA based uh, auditors, things like that. So, uh, and it was, it was a company directory. They had direct phone numbers, so we could literally pick the phone and call these people. So it, it, so it depending on what you're looking for, you know, it, it's a mix. It's a mix of knowing what to target, what to look for, as well as really people in. I mean, everybody right now is, is dealing with different challenges, whether it's the applicant shortage, people just aren't applying like they used to, you know, like, um, for example, I mean, like, I work in tech, engineers aren't applying to jobs. We have to go out and get them. We have to go out and and get them interested and tell them our, our company story and 
and use things like videos and social media and social media campaigns. Um, we have to utilize a lot of that to get the word out, to get them interested. Uh, in my in my outreach, I mean, I include videos. I call people, I text people. We have text campaigns we're doing right now. So, it and everybody has different challenges, whether it's sponsorship. I mean, a lot of people are, are not able to sponsor. A lot of people are looking for secret clearances, um, things like that. A lot of people, uh, our challenge in, in particular is, is finding candidates that are willing to relocate. We, we're mainly hiring out of two locations, Wilmington, Wilmington, Delaware and Buffalo, New York. Um, so like for instance, a lot of people from Toronto and Canada, uh, TN visas, we can work with them. That's, that's one place that we've gone as, as a solution. So it's, it's not just, it's not just knowing, knowing, uh, what your challenges are. It's about giving people options. Okay. Um, what we've been finding is that people are wanting obviously a hundred percent remote jobs and we have some of those not a, not a whole lot but they're also super local so like i've been targeting specifically around the delaware area short commutes things like that um, we work in a hybrid environment right now so i mean it's it it's not like five days a week some people they they do have that challenge so there is there is a lot of different things going on um, and a lot of different strategies that, that we've had to use. And a lot of it has been, been focused on automation, on data scraping, which I talk about a lot, pulling in hundreds of people instead of, you know, reaching out to 30 people, that we, which we used to do in the past. So there's a lot of different things going on. And so I, I, I really feel like it's, it's more solutions driven about getting people reeled in, you know, um, and having a, a solid company story, being able to talk about your company, it, about the positive things, you know. Um, and yeah, somebody had mentioned biggest struggle is is getting potential candidates to respond. Everybody's dealing with that right now because a lot of people, they just aren't applying. They don't, a lot of people just aren't going back to work. So how can, how can we change that? It's about having the conversation. It's about being human. It's about talking to people about what they want, about what options, that your company can provide, as well as understanding what they're looking for. I have conversations every day with people about, you know, um, you know, I can't relocate because I have, I, I have, I, I just bought a house. You know, that's that's one thing that that comes up a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, that's understandable. But if I have an open position that's 100% remote, I might reach out to them three months from then. So it's it's just about understanding the options and working with the person. So, so um, and you know, like. A lot of the conversations I have, I mean, it's it's it it's it's about being human. That's that's the biggest thing is people have forgotten humanity lately. <laughs> so, you know, uh, and that's the, that's the thing. It, it, it's it's not. I'm not grilling somebody for 45 minutes. We're literally having a conversation and talking about details. We're talking about this is the job that we've got. These are the couple of the jobs that we have what are you looking for and how how can i help align and, and find a pathway into our organization so greg i want to pull out a few strings that you just said there because there's a lot happening in all that right obviously be human take the time know the story for your business know their story um when we spoke originally you had said something that i thought was really interesting is how do you do this but at scale right how do you do this because it, it's hard to have these one-on-one -on -one conversations and then do it in a way that scales through the business. So how so is it you're able to keep track of these things and remember and have it fielded, the data fielded properly so you can come back to that person in three months? Like what what are the things you're doing to really make that work? So it's it's really marrying technology with outreach, okay? So it's, it, so pulling people into our CRM, we use Aventure, okay? Um, and that's one of the reasons why I'm a big fan of data scraping because uh, instead of inputting people one at a time, which is very time consuming, you can scrape a list of of a pipeline from from like a virtual conference or from um, what's what's another example um, from, from that directory, the directory that we found the other day. OK, you can pull the whole list. You can pull their phone numbers. You can pull emails a lot of times on these sites, uh, pro different profile sites. So the first the first piece is identifying the profile sites and there's several examples of how to do that. Uh, I do that all the time on my live streams, on my videos. Um, so if you're looking for specific examples, I, I've done every, I've done everything from healthcare to tech 
to manufacturing, um, PLC engineers, electrical engineers, things like that. So there's lots of examples on, on some of the videos that I've put out there. Okay. Um, but it's, it's about pulling in that entire pipeline. So you pull in a uh, hundred people, you put them in aperture and then you build campaigns, you build email campaigns, you build phone campaigns, texting campaigns. And we utilize several tools to do that. I mean, it's really like having a sourcing stack. So in order to, to scrape, I usually use data miner, which is a Chrome extension. Uh, it's one of my favorite and you can actually build a crawler out of it, which I've done recently. Okay, so this is getting kind of nerdy. Um, the, the best tool, if you're interested in data scraping to start with is Instant Data Scraper. And again, it's a Chrome extension. Um, that it's, it's pretty hit or miss, but if you're, if you're interested in pulling data from a web page, uh, like a directory, it does a, a pretty good job. Okay, so even if you don't input it into a CRM or some sort of database, you'll have the list you can go through and target people. Okay, so, and that's the thing is if you have some sort of information about the person, um, their job title, their company, um, some of the, sometimes these profile sites have experience on it. You can best target your, your audience and reach out to maybe 30 out of the 100 that would make sense. And then you'd repeat that for whatever other pipelines you find. So, and there are a lot of tools that actually have uh, scraping built into them, like Seekout, like Hire Tool. Uh, I think it's Hire Easy now. Um, uh, let, let's see what else. They, they also have enrichment functions. If anybody has LinkedIn Recruiter, they have a built in export function. So you can literally pull 25 people at a time and put them into a spreadsheet. And why is that important? Because they didn't used to have that function. So a lot of people don't even know that exists, but it's been extremely useful for me and my team because it helps us keep track of how many people we're reaching out to. Um, because of like, we're having to reach out to hundreds of people and we've in the, we're in the process of implementing um, uh, automation in, in some of the drip campaigns. So there's a couple other tools that I want to mention. Source Hub, I have demoed Source Hub. It's great. Jim is another one. It used to be Zen Sourcer. Those are two um, really uh, great tools that you can use if you're interested in, in building out drip campaigns because you can build out individual drip campaigns. So sending out several scheduled messages um, for one person or you can do it in bulk. So, and the thing is though, um, these messages that we're sending out, they're not they're not the job spec okay they're conversational like literally something that i would say to somebody that i'd be pitching to them in an elevator okay it's an elevator speech or a two-minute drill whatever you want to call it um like if 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 i met somebody at starbucks and they said that they were in recruiting how would i explain what i did to to let them know that we're recruiting for recruiters and sorcerers right now you know so that's the kind of what what would you say about your organization do you have remote work what are some of the advantages uh, are you open to sponsorship i include that stuff on in the messaging as well as videos as well as informative links so they can click in and find more information so greg i have a, a question i want to actually want to take a, a, a step back you said that you're recruiting for tech i'm recruiting can for you, tech can you <laughs> actually describe like, everything <laughs> describe describe your company and uh, what your company does, because I know it's really exciting technology uh, that so, you. You're, so I work for MIT Bank. I work okay, for MIT so, Bank. Here, here it is. So um, and so right now we're in the middle of a digital transformation. So we're hiring software engineers left and right. Um, we've been very fortunate because through the last couple of years, that's one of the reasons we've been interviewing and hiring because we've been growing. We've been growing where other banks haven't and and we're a, a super regional bank so most of our uh, locations are around you know new york state east coast um and and so i mean we've hired like close to 400 500 engineers job engineers done engineers everything that you can think of because this is an enterprise wide level uh transformational change we're doing everything from moving to cloud to modernizing technology to moving to agile we're doing all that and in the middle of a pandemic and we've acquired another bank. So just with and, that statement. And by the way, you're you're recruiting, just to be clear, you're recruiting for people to come work in 
in person for the most part. Well, right? see, that's the thing. What I tell people is I tell people exactly what I know. And that's, that's that we're working a hybrid model right now. We're taking it month by month. We're not requiring people to come in five days a week until we see what happens with COVID. The overall right. goal, the overall goal is to have these these positions transition into uh, more of an onsite type of environment. But we're taking it month by month and seeing what's going to keep them, what's going to keep everybody safe. But you're, so, you're being transparent about the fact that the company on the long term would rather have everybody in person. Yeah, and so yeah, and and so we also have. A timeline like we're, we're also looking for you know to make this type of transition till september 2022 if it makes sense so right like giving people flexibility and options and letting them know we're not expecting them to move in three weeks okay and and where where they're located is wilmington delaware and buffalo wilmington delaware and buffalo um but we also had some other position uh, some other locations opened up recently like baltimore maryland it's been an untapped market for us so, right, but these these are not technology hubs, so to speak, right? So uh, my my point is that in the context of like recruiting, you're having to sell these people on something uh, a lot, right? And it really does bolt in that marketing component, right? Because you're having to create awareness, you're having to create these stories, you're having to, oh, to yeah. convince. We, like, um, we, we talk to people all over the country and the majority of people that I talk to, they don't know who we are. So. I have to explain all of that. I have to explain that this is what's happened in the last couple of years. People are wanting stability right now. They want they they want to you know especially if you're on a contract they they want to have long term term jobs, you know. So there's there's a lot of variation with each person. Each person I talk to, I have a different conversation, and it should be that way because they remember me. They like six months from when I talk to somebody, they'll refer a friend or they'll they'll send me back an email and say, hey. Um, you know, I, I remember our conversation. I'm in the market right now. Can I help? So. I think you just said something super interesting, Greg, right, right? That people remember you. I think as recruiters, we often forget because we have so many interactions that we don't remember all of that. But on the other side of that equation, people do remember the recruiters because they don't have as many, right? Their interactions aren't as frequent. And so making sure that your conversations are relevant and, and purposeful allows them to remember you and then you know gives you opportunities later on. Um, you said something a few minutes ago and you called it a sourcing tech stack. And I sort of want to direct you back to that if you don't mind for a second. Um, as you were talking through the different tools and, and, and functionality that you think about with the sourcing tech stack, it sounds an awful lot like a sales tech stack. Right. So there's an awful lot like what a sales team might put together for their BDR team and their outreach team. Um, do you so want it to definitely just, mirrors you know that. that. It definitely mirrors that because what are we looking for? We're looking for leads, right? We're looking, it's, it's, it's lead generation in a lot of ways. And this is where recruiting technology is, is really evolving to. It's becoming more complex. It's becoming more advanced. So it's, it's easier to find people but it, you also have to make sure that you have the right tools in order to do that. Like right now we have access at, at MIT, we have access to a hire tool, we have access to CKL, we have access to Career Builder Dice. Um, uh, we're, we're in the process of getting um, Jim incorporated so, because a lot of what we do with Aventure is is manual email campaigns that we send out. Or, or and it, again, it's about calling people too. I mean, the majority of my time I'm spending on the phone calling people, trying to connect them to jobs. And even if I can't help them that day, I still try to give them some sort of takeaway. You know, like if if they don't have the correct visa status, like if if they're not an H-1B or something like that, uh, I'll let them know, like, this is always an open door. When you get your H-1B, give me a call back and we can talk more about some of the options that we can we can provide you. And you know what? That's happened. People have called me back. People remember those conversations and and uh, just the fact that I'm human and that I'm just talking to them like a, another person, you know, they these engineers, they get they get hammered so much with with, you know, different technologies and and questions that that aren't real. <laughs> For one, I ask them about their background. I ask them about what they're doing, what projects they're working with. 
because I want to understand what their story is. So when I when I write my summary, when I write about them, I'm communicating our conversation to to my my team, so they have a full understanding of the full story. You know, so. I'm glad you said that because in the chat we're getting there, there's quite a few people that have said one of the biggest challenges they face is getting candidates to respond. And so obviously we want to talk a little bit about like what is the great what do you say? What's your Haley asked? What's your elevator pitch? What are some of the secret things that Greg uses when he reaches out to people to get them to to respond? Um, and then kind of see you know let let us know where where you go from there. Well, there's a couple things that you can do, okay? Because um, you know you have to think about you know, what, what is great about your organization? What, what makes you want to come here and work? And one of the, the, the coolest things that we've done recently at MT is we've had a social media campaign around, uh, it, it was basically what's in between your brackets. We had, like, if you see my shirt, let me show you my shirt. Like my shirt says innovator because that's who I am. That's what I bring to the table. And I had a hard time thinking about this. What, what's the best word to describe me? Cause they had, words like thinker, um, creator, things like that. Um, but innovator is something that that I'm always trying to do. I'm always trying to improve. And basically we had these LinkedIn posts from, from people, employee testimonials about what they do, about why they like the organization. So if you if you have some time, take a look at, at some of the posts because I thought it was great to bring presence to what we do, not only on the tech side, but all over the bank. It was really cool to see the different stories and see, you, you know, what what people do every day. That's what people are looking for. They're looking for, you know, what what it is that we do, and and what it is we bring to the table. So, um, I hope that makes sense. Yeah, give us an example of something like you would give an example of a great message that you would send to kind of break down a barrier to communicate with a potential candidate. Well. So there's there's a couple things you could do in that respect too. Like I sometimes use dad jokes. I like dad jokes. Okay, um, how can you separate yourself from others? Like sometimes people just need to laugh. Okay, <laughs> like like I I I had one uh, campaign where I did I did jet dad jokes and I got several responses just because I used a different method. Um, you know, but what the most important thing is is I always try to be human in my messaging. I always try to be human that I would, I would send out when I send out a message, I would have the same conversation over the phone. Okay. I literally would say the same thing. So that's kind of how I think about if, if I'm reaching out to a person, how is it that I can help them? Um, if there is something that really speaks to me about their profile, mention it. I mean, if they have Ansible experience and I'm looking for an Ansible engineer, mention that I say, Hey, I saw your Ansible experience, you know? Um, we're looking for this, this, and this, you know, so just, that's how I think about it. I think about the best way to reach out to people is how you would reach out to them in, in an elevator pitch, right? You, you have them in a coffee shop, you're sitting next to somebody in a coffee shop or at a bar or at a, a, in an elevator and you see that they work for one of your competitors, right? So say you're trying to hire a sorcerer, what would you say to them? Or you're trying to say you you see that they're they're in recruiting. What do you say to them? You know what do you what what is different about your company that that you can bring to the table? And one of the things that that you know has been really prevalent throughout all this is COVID, right? So you know, like I have I wrote an article about my experience with COVID and how what MT bit Bank did to help us. So I included that with messaging because people need to see that people need to know that this company cares about this employees because you've seen so many CEOs out there right now that are saying everybody needs to come back to the office and you don't have a choice and what people want more than anything is options and choice right I mean they're okay a lot of people are okay with going back to the office they just like to have a choice right so oh. Greg, so I'm sorry, the words you keep saying are just so aligned to all of the, the content out in the market around go to market for sales, right? Address people as humans, look for the problem or the the, the tangential piece of, of them that relates to the business that you have. When you start to reach out at scale, right? Much like a sales organization, 
Um, what are the numbers you're trying to reach in a, in a given day? Are you trying to reach 30 people, 100 people, 1,000 people? How do you think about that scale? It depends on the job. So if it's something really niche and really specific, or if it's something executive level, um, you know, the, the number is going to be lower. But I mean, I put in close to 1,400 different engineers and technology folks in Aperture last month. Okay. So that's the kind of scale that we're getting to. And yes, you can send templates, but you can still make sure that they're, they're personalized. Like something simple, like including a first name. Okay. Like we have the technology to do that. You have the technology to do that on LinkedIn, you know? So, um, and, and, you know, the other thing is, is that utilizing what you have, but for instance, LinkedIn is, is not the best, they don't have the best search algorithms. So I use site searches. So site colon linkedin.com slash in, and then follow that syntax up with keywords to get a much better skill set and people that we haven't touched in LinkedIn. So it's, it's all about getting new names um, and also not losing the scope of your audience. So yeah, that sounds like a lot of people, but all of those were senior software engineers. All of those were based in Java. And I pulled from several different resources. I pulled from uh, uh, virtual conferences because I pulled a good group, like I guess about 400 or so from a virtual conference, um, utilized, seek out to enrich the data, get more information on them. Um, I think the initial list was like close to like 900, but um, so some of those folks fall off because they're not aligned to what we're looking for, but that's the kind of scale that we're talking about here. Okay. That's, that's what lead generation is all about, but you get them in your database, you, you start your drip campaigns. Um, and because a lot of times people will just ignore the first email. So if you just shoot them one email or call them one time, they may, they might miss you. Right. So a lot of times I send out times, three emails, right? I send out a text, I, I call them a couple of times before I, I let them go, especially if they're a good candidate. I'm going to do all that. Okay. Eight to 15 so, times is what the data says for, for outreaches, right? On business outreach, and, eight to 15 times. And the, the thing is, you've got to keep in mind that now, right now, people are going back into the office. They can't just pick up the phone and take a call anymore. So a lot of times, yeah, we do miss each other, but you gotta, you gotta maintain some persistence as well as think about is it, what's the return on investment? If I have a gold star person, I'm going to, I'm going to definitely go after them. So <laughs> I, I hope you don't have to reach out eight to 15 times for, for some folks, but you should at least try different forms. Uh, you know, um, I don't know. I'd bring in LinkedIn a lot, but. Like a lot of a lot of virtual conferences, like I'll just pitch, I'll just say, hey, I'm I'm hiring software engineers. You know, if anybody needs any help, just ping me. It, it, I send my email address. So, I'll, and I've got interviews that way. So it's it's more about, you know, no, it's more about using different methods. Okay, so you reach them by email, reach them by text, reach them by um, uh, whatever database you're in currently. You know, like like Dice has a messaging now. So, you know, uh, I just got off the, the phone with, with some Dice folks. So, um, so yeah, I mean, you you want to be persistent, but you don't want to be overly persistent. You don't want to like, you don't want to text them five times in a day, okay? So do you think we had a couple people in the chat um, ask about like if they're, if they're working for different firms and reaching out to maybe different companies that you're not, super knowledgeable about what the companies do or what they are. Do you think the best way to go about reaching out would be kind of like you just said, to just keep it really straight and to the point and say, I am hiring software engineers. That way you don't have to worry about, I don't know what your company does or what you do or what I'm hiring for, but this is what I need. What do you, what do you think about that approach? If you need to hire for a lot of roles from, for companies that maybe you don't know a whole lot about. So that that's the thing is that use variation use the short and sweet method if it works for you use the long expanded detailed version because people respond differently depending on what kind of messaging you use so for example i used to be a short and sweet guy i used to like you know send out one-liners things like that okay um because so much stuff has happened the last two years like i've noticed that i'm i'm explaining a lot more in my outreach 
Um, I mean, it's it's like my full elevator speech on what has happened because there's so much stuff that's happened with the pandemic, so many different things that are going on in people's lives. So my messaging ha and, and, and calls have been, it been much more detailed than in the past. Okay, and that works for me. But every once in a while, I'll throw in a dad joke and see if I get some more responses. Or I'll try a short and sweet method to see if I get more responses. A lot of my um, drip campaigns are, are more like, hey, I sent you an email. I just wanted to, to, to make sure that you received it. Or, or uh, I just want to make sure that you know that we're hiring and, and I'd be happy to help you out, something like that. So, and a lot of times I'll, I'll get a response back and say, I didn't get that first one or I didn't get that first call, you know? So it's, it, it's about using different methods. It's about connecting in different ways. And again, it's about finding different pipelines and places to talk to people. You what just, I hear you describing is is that at the end of the day, you have to try a lot of different things. You, you have do. to collect the data. You have to determine what your what your objective is, and then you have to adjust as as time goes on, based upon circumstances, based upon learnings, etc. Right? You, you have to you have to use what works because people communicate in different ways. Like I'm a Gen Xer, okay? Like I would rather you text me. All right, I'd rather email me or text me than call me because a phone call can be time consuming, but that's just me. Like, you know, or message me on Facebook or message me on whatever platform you're on, but that's just me. Um, but people respond differently to things. A lot of people like calls, they like to get calls. And again, to separate yourself from other people, a lot of people don't call people anymore. A lot of people don't have those open conversations. A lot of people don't talk about options and how we can help each other because that's why I got into recruiting was to help people find jobs. And now I think about people's families and how some of them might be losing their jobs, losing their contracts, being stuck, being in a tough spot. And so now my goal is not just to help the person, it's to help their families, okay? Because this world has been rough for the last two years. So we, we have a lot of open conversations about humanity um, when we, when we, we, when we talk to candidates, you know, and people appreciate that people appreciate you just being real. Um, I just want to let everybody, I've seen a couple people ask about tools. I am keeping track of the tools that Greg has listed. So I'll make sure that when we do the write up, I, I include the data scraper, seek out everything. Someone did specifically ask about site search. So can you just say that again, that what you use on LinkedIn for your site search, please? So I will type it in the chat. Thank you. But when I look on LinkedIn, I look in different ways. Okay. If you Google this, I, let's see, what, what's an example? What, what does somebody need? Let me just, let me just put in data engineer. Okay. No, let's do something. Let's do something salesy. Um, we were talking about sales. So this is an example of how I would look for a sales director. Okay? Greg, are you sharing? If you yeah. go ahead, you can share yeah, your screen. I did. Like. I did. I did. So <laughs> if you, you put it in, that the chat. in the chat, it's site linkedin.com oh, slash I in. So I don't want to get overly complex here, but that basically, if you put that into Google, uh, it's, it's going to say, hey, Google, I want to look specifically at LinkedIn.com for profiles with sales director somewhere in them. And you're going to get a much better search than you do if you use some of the internal, uh, internal uh, functionality. So a lot of sites are like this. A lot of sites, the built-in built -in stuff isn't the best. Um, so especially if I had like, a, this is how I filled a, a group vice president role is it was a very complex, it had different modules. Um, when I was using LinkedIn recruiter, wasn't finding the right skill set. So um, because th this person needed to be like an expert in service now and Ansible and, and a, a, a long, a, a big array of different technologies, right? So I used this method to find a much better list and they're all people we haven't touched. So this works because it has worked for us. It was, it was a big executive position too. So, um, but that's one example. Okay. You can do this for pretty much uh, any profile site. You can, you can use a site search. There's a lot of tools that already do this, like seek out and hire tool already do this in a lot of ways. Um, but I wanted to, I wanted to keep it kind of simple cause I don't want to lose the, the whole audience. Cause a lot of people don't use this type of stuff. Okay, but um, but like I built tools, I built programmable search engines to do this. 
Uh, there's there's a lot of different methods out there. So, um, and to take, somebody to, had to asked go back about to... the texting software, text recruit is what we use. We were actually not utilizing it outside of onboarding. I'm like, well, why don't we use it for text campaigns? And it is, it is great because you can actually build uh, automation based drip campaigns through text messages. And it's an absolutely fabulous tool. You just, you need to make sure that the, the phone numbers are right. And I always try to call people or email people. So at least they know who I am and what I'm talking about. Cause you don't want to spam people. And just for reference, Glenn um, added on to the site search in the chat about if you want to do country specific. So make sure you take a look in the chat if there's some additional things that everybody wants to, to learn about. And I'll make sure I'm keeping track of all this as well. Yeah, so you can, you all, you all you can get add location. You can, you, can, you can mix it up quite a bit. And there's a lot of examples. I do this a lot on my live streams too. So if you want an example, um, yeah, there's, there's, I always do this stuff on live streams. I to, can, to, go back, to go back stuff. to the first question um, that um, that Leah brought up about like all the people uh, they're out there, you just have to find them, right? Um, the uh, what you're doing is you're just basically building a list. That's step one to this entire process. Absolutely. So you're building pipelines. So I used to build a pipeline, but now it's multiple pipelines because profile sites has, have different information on them. Um, some sites have a lot of information, some sites don't. Some conference sites has full profiles, LinkedIn profiles, things like that, some of them don't. Um, Hopin is, is a virtual platform that I use a lot. Um, depending on the conference, they might have stuff like their email or their LinkedIn or, or things like that. Um, but that can be kind of complex to pull information from. Um, but there's there, there's there's always a way there's always a way to 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 pull the information you just have to maybe build something so um so that's what i i mean that's what i do a lot i i find the pipeline i find a way to get it into our crm and then we build a strategy and a process around outreach based on based on a a targeted audience so right um so let yeah. me ask let me ask this question because you you did use this word at one point when you were kind of walking through, you talked about enhancing the data, right? So you pull this initial list because they have the keyword sales director. Uh, what what process have you tried? What do you what works, what doesn't work as it's related to trying to marry up other data to try to create additional filters or, or what are you doing on that front? So un unfortunately, most of the data enriching tools are based off of LinkedIn data and they will require a LinkedIn profile. So that's probably the first thing I try to go for is if I can identify a LinkedIn profile and for instance, like I say, I don't have the, the emails, you know, um, or, or I don't have their phone numbers. That's the first step. So there's, so um, tools like Seekout and Hire Easy. I keep forgetting it's not Hire Tool anymore. They have uh, they they have a functionality where you can pull a CSV or a spreadsheet and, and import it into their tool, and they'll look on LinkedIn and it, and it, and you can you can enrich that. So you can you can build out profiles. You can you can search for emails and things like that. Okay, um, it's not as good as Zap Info used to be. Okay, so Zap Info used to be great at this, but it's been recently acquired. Oh, it was acquired like before the pandemic. I think I think it's 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 built into Indeed now. So, um, but that used to be my go-to tool, but they don't have that anymore. So a lot of a lot of what I do is I'll plug if I can find the LinkedIn email, I'll plug it into Seekout, and then pull the the, the contact information. Um, the other thing you can do is you can identify um, profiles that have the emails built built in or have a contact like the directory that I was in yesterday. Uh, it had it had phone numbers. OK, that's what you need. Direct phone numbers is great. And it had I, I know I, I, I'm not screen sharing, but it had their name, their their job title, the company that they work for and and a phone number, a direct phone number. So I could have actually built a crawler to get all that information. And that's enough. OK, that's enough to go on and, and see if that's a targeted audience. OK. Um, and I know that those phone numbers are somewhat accurate because they're on a directory. 
another tool somebody had mentioned see uh swordfish i like swordfish um it is one of these other contact finders and one of the cool things about swordfish in particular is it pulls from facebook which a lot of people which a lot of these tools don't and i believe it also pulls from twitter um craig when you start pulling together your list how much of your initial work is looking at your existing contacts, either an aperture or in your um, your ATS as your sort of starting point? Or are you usually looking for fresh meat? No pun intended. I'm, I'm so Sourcing. it's a little bit of both. So we have drip campaigns built in aperture. That's why we're trying to get them into aperture so we can utilize them in in a smart, effective way. But I can import whatever list I need to. And if I just search, I can I can take out any duplicates by by matching up with first and last name. And that usually catches anybody that is already in the system. Okay. So the aperture can be complex as far as bulk imports. And that's why if we use it in this way, it's using technology overall to, to streamline the whole process. So instead of reaching out to, you know, 30 to hundred people, I can reach out to like literally 500 people if I need to. Um, or if we haven't heard, if we haven't gotten any response from people in like over six months, um, reach out to those folks and see if they're looking for a job. I literally did this at the end of the year during Christmas. I, I sent people a happy holidays message and hey, we're still hiring. And it worked like a charm. Like I was super busy the last two weeks of the year because I sent out some of these these just general messages around, hey, happy holidays. And by the way, we're, we're still hiring if you're still looking for work, you know, because what happens in December, a lot of people get laid off in December, which sucks. But if we can help more people out, that's why we do this stuff. Yeah, Leah, we just we, we posted a blog not too long ago too about how December starts to fall off, but January is like open season, man, and people don't realize it, and they really need to start engaging people around the holidays because there's people looking. And you know candidates what? Honestly, come onto the market before the jobs do, in so, so candidates show up ready to to look for a new job the last week of December, but companies on average don't get their act together till the third week of January. So it's a mismatch. <laughs> And one of the things that we're that that we used to struggle with was hiring recruiters and sourcers. Okay, until I started making TikTok videos about it. Okay, and so this this is another audience. This is not something I don't think anybody else is talking about but me because I'm a huge nerd. Okay, but so I put some of these. I made some of these TikTok videos, right? And and you know telling them about our company, saying hey, we're hiring. Which we still are hiring recruiters and sourcers. So if anybody is looking. Like just, just, just find me and send me a message. I'll, I'll be glad to talk and help. But um, okay, enough with my, my own company promotion. Um, but we use these TikTok videos, and I, I posted them to various Facebook groups, Facebook groups that uh, I, I regularly contribute to. People know me. People have seen my videos. So I put them, uh, several, several of these Facebook groups. I put them on Twitter. I put them on LinkedIn. I had engaging messaging around it, and. You know, we we had like zero applicants um, one the week before I went on vacation and I had I mean, I had a good number of people, maybe like 20 or so reach out to me when they saw the video. I was sending people to my boss when I was on vacation. OK, and she said that her her applicants like they jumped up like 30 people or something like that. It was crazy. Um, so that's that's one way you can connect with an audience, especially separating yourself from other people and, and, you know, utilizing communities to help engage and in, in have people come to you so much easier sometimes when you just old school recruit, <laughs> right? Uh, Greg, you partner with your, your recruiting team, right? The sourcing organization partners with the recruiting team. How does that work where, you know, they're doing uh, work to get uh, put postings out in the market and drive candidates on an inbound basis while you're sort of out sort of sourcing and hunting for them. How do you partner and make that an effective partnership? Well, I mean, it's partnering is just, it's, it's like uh, partnering with the hiring managers. I mean, we're, we're all on the same team. I mean, I know there's some challenges between recruiters and sourcers and how we look at it is that we're all on the same side. Okay. When it comes down to it, like this is a hard market. We have to work together. So, um, you know, like my coworker, Craig and I, I mean, we, we work pretty, uh, pretty regularly together and 
Like I'll reach out on a massive scale. He's, he, we both go on intake calls with the hiring managers, make sure that we know uh, what they're looking for. We, uh, I'll have benchmarks pulled, so sample profiles when we meet with them so we know we're on target. Um, and and that's, that's the thing is, it shouldn't be hard to work together. Everybody has all kinds of different protocols and steps they have to take. Um, but as long as you remember you're on the same team, I mean, it it, it shouldn't be too difficult. I mean, um, you know, and, and that's the thing is, we, we inform each other of our barriers and our challenges and what we're seeing and what we're not seeing. So we both know it's going to be a hard sell uh, for somebody who's living close to like Delaware to move to Buffalo if we have a site in Wilmington. So that's the thing. We just we just take it day by day. We ha we laugh about things. It's important to laugh about things. You know, when when we have another step that we have to take or you know, we have to send a coding challenge before they meet with a hiring manager, we have to laugh about that stuff. You know, um, don't just don't take life too seriously. There's no such thing as an HR emergency, okay? Like <laughs> and and we, we rely on each other, you know? Like if somebody, if if one of my recruiters is is getting a lot of pressure from one side of the business, I wanna know that so I can forecast and I can help them out. So it's it's just about, it's just about being a, a it's just about helping everybody that you can. That's, a, oh, that's why I put out videos because a lot of times I'll be like, hey, this is a pretty good, this is a pretty good uh, resource. I'm gonna, Put this out and, and share it with everybody because the more people we help the better it's going to it's going to go back around um oh, someone else wants to jump in i was yeah, just gonna I, hop I, in oh go ahead bridget yeah i was just gonna have a quick question because we're seeing a lot in the chat of like where does sourcing end and recruiters take over a lot of companies are now including sourcers where previously they only had recruiters so, I mean, where does the sourcing role end and where does that kind of handle? Talking about handoffs. Yeah. So, handoffs change it. They, they change. Okay. So, right now, where the handoff changes with us is um, I, I will call the person, I will I will screen them, I'll make sure that all they, 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 they uh, check all the marks and stuff like that. Um, and then send to the recruiter who then schedules the interview with the hiring manager. Okay. So in that gray line, there is the application. We have to get them to apply into Workday in, in order to get them scheduled for interview. So that's really the, the official handoff is when they apply, okay? But there's always gray areas there. Like, um, like I will send the application link to the candidate and say, hey, if to get a head start, apply to this link so we can get you scheduled for interview. So there's always gonna be a gray line there. A lot of our other organizations have it scheduled differently. They have it work differently. Um, we used to have a coding challenge, but we moved that after the technical interview because like we literally didn't, like people in general, they are are much low, they have much lower attention spans. Like even a filling out an application be, could be a deterrent, okay? So we try to make it as, as easy as possible. And that's one of the reasons why we moved the, the coding challenge to later on in the process. So, I mean, that's, that's the thing. You've got to constantly adapt and change. Okay. And yeah, the, the official handoff might be when they apply, but I'm still going to help get them through the, the next steps of it, if it helps my whole team. Right. So, um, but a lot of other organizations, like, um, like some organizations, the sorcerer doesn't talk to the person, but I don't really know if this person is going to be a batch dip, depending on, on, on a couple of factors. I, I don't know really where to best align this person until I talk to them. So, so we're seen as, as, uh, you know, experts, as far as sending people forward, you know, like if, if I think this person's going to be more of a tech lead, I'm going to have a conversation and talk to them about it. You know, a lot of, a lot of those LinkedIn profiles, they don't tell the whole story. Greg, something that uh, is coming in the chat right now is around, let's say you have this conversation with a person and you realize they're great. Does your business put process in place that makes that person then go and apply for the job through your website? Or are you able to sort of jump some of these steps, make it easier for the candidate and get them right in front of the hiring manager? We can, okay, and that's that's an important aspect. If you have a transformational employee, if you know that they're transformational, if you know that this person is going to come in and make a huge difference, it's 
you know, it's you can have interviews, but as far as as being in compliance, they're going to have to apply at some point. You know, that's that's what this is all about, really. Okay, so so it's it's again, it's another it's <laughs> another step that they have to take, <laughs> but. Um, but for instance, I mean, like I have convers I have discovery conversations with people every day. Okay. They haven't applied to the job. They don't even know about the job. They have no idea what job that we're considering them for a lot of times. They have no idea who the company is. This person is completely cold and has no idea who we are typically because they haven't had time to look us up. So I like to share the details with them and tell them a little bit, bit about us. So I can see if they're, say, so I can gauge how interested they really are. Okay. So that's the thing is, yeah, I mean, when they when they officially become a candidate, that's when they have applied in the system. So there there is some variation, there is some flexibility around that, but you have to be careful, especially if you're you're an OFCCP company. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that we found with a lot of companies is there are a couple of the OFCCP EEOC requirements. And of course, uh, we were talking texting before, the texting requirements if you're doing mass texting to make sure you've gotten uh, permission to do to do mass texting. Um, there is always a, a compliance component we have to think about, and and you know you said it before that's with the, the difference handoff. between our CRM, which is amateur, and and Workday. When they apply in Workday, they've officially become a candidate. Okay, they've they've expressed interest. We've gauged and made sure that they were that they're of quality. They're they're they have all the skills and they're qualified. Um, and so that's. That's how I think about it. When they're qualified and interested and they've applied to the role in Workday, they have officially become a candidate. <laughs> okay, there's a lot of factors that happened before that. So. Uh, so as we're, we're wrapping up here, we're getting close to time. Um, Greg, I, I have a final question for you. you know, one of the things that has come through the chat, but is similar to something that you've done, which is you've built teams out. And how do you get all the passion, the knowledge, the information that's in your head into your new team members as you bring them on. And I'm saying this because one of the conversations happening in the chat is around staffing firms and the challenge that they have coming up to speed on their different clients and having that passion and understanding. But it's similar to bringing a new person on. How do you how do you transfer knowledge effectively and quickly to get those folks up to speed and, and make them as best they can be as quickly as possible? Well, well, the, for the first thing you start with, I mean, you you start with the keywords. You start with the skills that you're looking for. Like every every company has, or every every job has acronyms. They all have certain skills, whether it's tech or or healthcare. I mean, healthcare loves acronyms just as much as tech does. So if you've got somebody that's completely law, like completely new to a field, there's resources out there. Like it, especially tech, glossary tech, that's been extremely helpful. For a lot of the new folks that we've been training and ramping up because it's a knowledge base it's a repository of information around any technology most it of any technology i was trying to look up a hogan mainframe technology doesn't have it that because that's like super old but um i made a TikTok video about that i thought that was a little funny so um but but so there's there there's that and it's also you know research is is, is a key thing so if you're looking for a cpa shouldn't you look up CPA in Google and see what it's about, right? And you don't you don't know what a CPA does, or if you don't know what a CISA person does, look up CISA. If you don't know what a nice engineer does, which is fire suppression, literally look it up because, and, and, and that's also a great example is like nice and engineer. I used a one keyword search on LinkedIn to find nice and engineers, fire suppression. Um, this was back in my agency days, by the way. So uh, it was, yeah, you get a short list with just one keyword. Same thing with biotech, like GXP, um, GMP. It's it's manufacturing in in the biotechnology field. Those were huge, and that's just through looking through the job, looking and identifying keywords, and then translating it to a target audience. So. Awesome, um, Jody. Final thoughts or comments you'd like to give the card? Anybody have any final questions before we wrap up for today? You can Why? you can literally Google anything. You know, if you're not sure, <laughs> and like if I need to fix my car or I need to fix my water heater, which I have some issues with my water. I was looking at YouTube. Look up YouTube videos. There's YouTube videos for everything, including sourcing, because this guy makes them. 
I was gonna say, so, and Greg has a YouTube channel. <laughs> I'm multi-platform now. I have a TikTok channel and a YouTube channel because I, I don't have as much time to make full YouTube videos. <laughs> You so. can even Google if you have health concerns and stuff and know the true meaning of what's going on with you. Like if you're not WebMD, die. don't go, don't go WebMD. <laughs> don't go WebMD. Like, am I going to die in like a couple hours or do I have some time? It's yeah. always the worst on WebMD. So, right. but if you're looking for doctors, you can hold, go to like health grades and doximity and, and stuff like that. So, I mean, I did, I did healthcare too. <laughs> so. And remember everything you read on the internet is true. Okay. So keep 100%. that in mind. One Actually, there's um, I do have two tools, tools that that can then show you falsified. They can show you fake stuff, but I'm, yeah, I haven't dove into those too much yet. I do have um, a couple. Points I wanted to mention. So, I'm a dinosaur. I've been recruiting for 25 years, and a lot of the companies that I've been recruiting for are small companies. So we don't have budgets for giant, you know platforms and big tools and all that stuff. So it's old fashioned head hunting, you know, hunting people down. Um, and I think the, the key to um, what's really helpful for me is building those relationships. It's kind of like if you're looking for a job, um, when you're desperately looking for a job is not the time to start networking, right? So yeah, yeah. when you're desperately looking to fill a position, that's not the time to say, well, Let's go network. Like it's already, it has to be done already. So say, you know, say I talked to this great guy, his name is Greg. I don't know if you've heard of him. Um, you know, so I, I, you know, talk to you, you're great. Maybe we didn't, you know, align on a position three years ago or whatever, but Greg and I become best friends. So I can, I could reach out to Greg if, you know, later on down the road, if I have a need. Um, and um, also Greg might have some good friends that I want to connect with. So I look at who he's connected with, or you look at that. I love the little sidebar on LinkedIn. I'm a LinkedIn snob. I freaking love it. I don't use anything else, but where it says people also viewed. And exactly, so yeah. people that are very close, closely yeah. related to Greg. Um, and so that's how you can build a network. And so anybody that you talk to that's good, add them to LinkedIn because good people know good people. Um, also, um, I like also searching, you know, my connections networks. So, you know, sometimes people can guard it to where like Greg can't see my second degree connection or his second degree connections in my network, but some people do. So you can go in there, you can look at his second degree and third degree connections for Java people. I look for Java people all the time. So anyway, those are just a few tips for me. Like build that network when you're not desperate and then the texting of course because you know people don't really look at their personal emails as much so when you talk to people say hey can i text you you know that's a lot easier to you can schedule interviews faster you can ask them a quick question faster because time is of the essence you know we're we're losing candidates very quickly because other companies are a little bit quicker i'll, I'll mute now thing. thanks that's the thing it's like utilizing a tool to the best it, the the most potential like a lot of people don't realize that you get notifications if somebody goes open to hire okay that's yeah. that's that's a huge aspect because you already know they're in the market they just went into the market and if they're in your if especially in a recruiter that's some a lot of people don't know about or the similar profiles or looking you can actually look through groups so if you're looking for diversity i've used that for for our diversity initiatives i mean there's lots of women's groups there's lots of of, 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 of diverse DNI um, type of groups that are on LinkedIn that you can utilize and on Facebook too. So why why aren't you utilizing that? Because a lot of people don't know that it's, it's hidden between some of the advanced functions. So again, I use LinkedIn in a different way, um, but I also use other things too. Awesome. Well, we are, we are at time everybody. Um, and thank you all for coming today. Quick reminder, Terry that actually was just dropping some knowledge is going to be our speaker oh. next month. 
So Carrie, thank you because you were a chicken. Nope. So, so next no recording. On the table, you're all going to be getting an e email with the recording um, from today's webinar, or round table webinar, oh, round table, and it'll include a link to register for next month's, which Carrie is going to be our featured speaker. Um, there's a lot of links in the chat for people to connect with on LinkedIn. I'll include everything. I'll include tools. You're all going to get a follow up. So if there's anything you missed or you couldn't take notes today, no worries i've got you covered we've got a great team behind the scenes taking all the notes so connect with each other keep an eye out for the follow-up that's going to have the recording um, and the registration information for may so you can all hear carrie and please go connect with greg on linkedin um, and we'll see you all next month thank you so much for coming today it was an awesome conversation we'll see everybody wave to tiktok and go find greg on tiktok <laughs> go everybody wave i'm taking a tiktok right now Hi, everybody. Bye. Bye.